So what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. So I bought this trailer and as you know, I made some mistakes on ordering it. And before we go over all the issues and options I made a mistake on with this trailer, I wanna go over a couple accessories that I made a mistake on too that I have to take back. I bought these race ramps you see here on the ground. I bought these thinking that these would be fine. They weren't, unfortunately. If you watched my unveiling video, you saw that these ramps were way too short. So what I had to do was, I had to order some very long ramps. So I'm gonna show you a comparison really quickly of both ramps, okay? Now, as you guys can see, this ramp is not only longer, but it is taller too. So you have to figure out what your degree angle is gonna be. This company, Race Ramps, gives you some examples of what you have to look out for and how to measure. I just kind of guess. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't do any of that. So I pray these work. We're gonna find out really soon, but I know they're gonna work because they have a little bit more height on them. And that's why I chose these over the other ones that were slightly lower than these. But if you have a second, go back and watch my unveiling video so you can see these ramps in action because like I said they were just too short so I'm going to return these and I'm going to go ahead and set these up because I got to take my car out of my trailer the last reason why I picked these specific ramps too is because you see this indention right here this is a spot where you can lay your your flat down basically in so it fits in that spot so it kind of gives you a little bit more space now as you can see on this side I may have to have someone help me when I need to put the car back on because the ground on this side is slightly off. But it's not a big deal. Someone just needs to hold the flat down. And I might be able to get a piece of wood. Actually, you know what I can do? If I can't get my wife or someone to come, all I would have to do, which is good to have pieces of wood with you, I could probably just do something like that. That way, it could have a little bit of lift there. So that's probably what I'll do right there. Works out perfectly. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can do this by myself because I don't have anybody today to help me. And my wife's homeschooling our kids. All my friends are at work like I should be, but I took off today and here we are. Wifey is coming. I don't feel comfortable doing this by myself. Once I've done this maybe 10 times and I've learned how to like do it the right way, because this is my first time, I'm gonna wait for her to come or I'll have to have someone with me to help because I don't wanna damage my car or this trailer. I have way too much invested and I can't afford that to happen. So I'm gonna hang tight here. Wife says she's gonna make the kids some food and then she'll be over to help me out. So I'll see you guys in one, two, three. And just like that, car is gone. Actually, it's not just right behind me. But I wanted to go through some of the mistakes I made ordering this trailer because this is my first time ever buying a cargo trailer, race trailer, whatever you want to call this. And I made some mistakes. Now, obviously, let's face it. There's just some things you're just not going to see or you're going to miss some things. And that's what I did here. So the very first thing I'm going to show you guys is your entry door. Now, why is this a big deal? So you guys can see, I have what's called a bar lock on this door. So a bar lock is basically this. This is how this door unlocks and locks. Now, as you guys can see, I have an RV style latch on my door now. So when I ordered this trailer, this was an option to have installed on your door. The only issue is if you don't get this, if you ever want to work inside your trailer, like right now, it's like 40 degrees out here. It is freezing and it's windy. So if you don't have this latch, this door just stays open just like this. And I didn't know that when I ordered this trailer. So luckily, Beckley's Camping Center, they hooked me up. Be sure to subscribe to Justin Shanholter's channel. He was able to call Homesteader and they sent a latch and we got this installed. No questions asked, got it done for no charge. But again, they actually helped me. I think actually I paid for maybe the installation. I think it was like hundred bucks, but that was my fault because when I ordered this trailer, I never brought this up as an issue. So that's the first thing. Now the same topic, you see how narrow this door is. There's an option to have a 48 inch door. 
that was an option that I should have got because had I ordered this trailer with a 48 inch door, it would have come with this latch too. So those two things, I mean, granted, I don't need a 48 inch door, but it would have been nice to have a wider door because if you're carrying tires inside the door here, because if your car's inside the trailer, you see how narrow it is? And it would have just been nice to have just a wider door in general. I mean, this is not bad, but 48 inches would have been a lot better. The next thing on my list, is my ramp door now this ramp door as you guys can see has been coated in the last video i showed that to you when i first got the trailer however this was all exposed wood now what i did is i ordered this trailer with finished floor this is basically a marble vinyl floor i had the walls finished and i had the ceiling finished and i have the lights on the roof too these only can come on if you hooked up the 30 amp or 110 volt power so when we ordered this trailer we were under the impression that this door was going to be finished with this same material now homesteader reached out they said that if it's wet it could be slippery it could be a hazardous so they said they'd prefer not to put anything on this so when you go to order the floors i would recommend getting the coin style floor it has like it's a black floor with like little dots on it and you could get the same thing on the ramp door because they said that's a little bit better for grip but unfortunately, if you want to get this door done, it's $530 to get sprayed with Linex. That's a lot of money, guys. And I could have done something different. I could have probably did something myself, but I just want it done right. And trust me, this thing is not going to slip. I mean, this is done perfectly. And they also did my flap here, too. So it all came out nice. It is heavy, though. I will say this definitely added some weight to the trailer. But if you're ordering your trailer, I would skip the marble floor and just get the coin style floor and just get the rear uh, the rear door done too. Now for the most part, a lot of these things aren't that big of a deal. So I did a pretty good job for my first trailer. My next trailer wouldn't be dangerous though. But the next thing I gotta talk about is E-Track. So I did add E-Track after the fact. When they were building the trailer, they were able to squeeze this one last option on my build sheet. The only issue I made here was this. You see how far over the E-Track is? What I should have done was I should have had my car measured from the tires and had E-Track positioned on the floor where it would be in the center. That way when I go to strap my car down, they have special straps that will allow you to strap the tires down over the wheels and tires. And it's just a lot easier. Now, unfortunately, if I want to strap this car down, I have to go under my control arms. And did I ever mention my car was lowered? So it's harder to do that. Sometimes dealers will not stock their trailers with E-Track because they prefer that the E-Track system be positioned how the customer wants it. And one thing that you can do is you don't have to have E-Track ran all the way over like I did. You can actually have it done like in certain spots if you want. But I just prefer to have it all the way through. So when I go to sell it, I feel like I can get more resale value. So let's kind of go through everything one more time. So we talked about having an RV style latch installed from the factory, which I was able to do, which is not a big deal, but it still cost me a little bit more money. The second thing is getting a wider entry door. Third thing was the back ramp door having a some type of coating on it or some type of protector for the, over the wood. E-Track was the fourth. Fifth thing is gonna be more lighting inside the trailer. Now, the lights on the roof, these light up the entire trailer perfectly. However, you're gonna need 110 volts to run it. So 30 amp, I mean, you can get down to 10 or 15 amps too. I can plug in a cord to my house and run these lights. But the problem is, on this side of the trailer, it's darker. And I would like to put more one more 12 volt light under here too. So these lights run off the battery on the trailer, right? And so I wish I would put two more on this side and then one more under here just to have more lights on if I can't run these LED lights which run off 110 volts. Not a big deal, but you know, if I'm doing work inside of here, it'd be nice to have more light. The last two things I'm gonna talk about are the most important things on this video. So I went with a spread axle and I also went with a beaver tail. Now beaver tail basically allows the trailer to kind of have somewhat of a slant in the rear and you can see on the inside of the trailer the floor kind of goes 
kind of goes down like that. You can see it. I don't know if, yeah, let me just move this out of the way. So you can kind of see how the, the floor goes down. That way you, it gives you more like clearance. The only issue with having a beaver tail is whenever you go up a steep driveway, the trail is gonna probably drag. So what I should have done was I should have added some rollers under the trailer. That way, if I bought them out, I don't damage the trailer. So that was something that they do have an option for at the manufacturer. And I wish I would have added that. Now, the last thing I'm gonna talk about, let me go on the other side of the trailer. The biggest mistake I made in ordering this trailer and I think it's something that will help a lot of people out there is this. When I first put in my order, I had half of the options that I added originally. I went back a week later and asked them to add a bunch more stuff. And when I did that, of course, when you add a bunch of options, what does that normally do to your trailer? It increases the unloaded weight. So this is a 9,950 pound gross vehicle weight rated trailer. Because I added all of these options, let me show you how much capacity I have. I have 5,557 pounds to put all my stuff inside this trailer. I have cabinets, and then I have to load my car, right? So this car weighs 4,800 pounds. So I'm pretty much almost at the limit of this trailer once I add this car in there. Now, if you wanna add an AC unit, if you wanna add a bunch of uh, air tanks and generator and all that stuff, you're gonna have to go with a 10-4 or maybe 14,000 pound GVWR trailer just to stay safe. Now, obviously you don't need 14,000 pounds, but I would go 10-4, 11,000, 11.5, just to be on the safe side. Because if you're racing your car and you're gonna have tires and wheels and you know all kinds of stuff inside of here, AC units, you, know, you might even wanna do two AC units depending on your climate. You need to make sure you understand these weight capacities. So that was the biggest thing that I wish I would have done is just added maybe just 10 four, just so I would have at least a thousand left over once my car is inside the trailer. But you know, once you add your oil, your gas, and all your accessories, your cars, I could have less than a thousand pounds left over. And if I want to add an AC unit, that could be 300 pounds on top of this thing. So you just want to make sure when you start adding options, like even for example, like this Line X, I don't know how much Line X weighs, but this door is a lot heavier. So this is weight. So all these things have to kind of work together. So make sure when you're building your trailer, you understand that there are a lot of things that you're gonna have to figure out before you order your trailer. So I would say take two weeks, talk to other dealers, talk to other manufacturers, get as much information as you can because once you order this trailer and it gets there, you don't want to be like, ah, like, oh, I wish I would've did this different. Oh, I wish I would've did this different. The good news is I'm happy with my trailer. I just want to help you guys out. If there's things that I probably would have done differently, I want you guys to know about it. That way, if someone else might be interested in ordering a the trailer, they know about these things. So be sure to share this video on social media with other people. I'm going to do another video going over options and things that you might be interested in for example you actually can get a higher ceiling on this trailer if you like and what that would do for you is it would give you more clearance so if you want to put tires mounted on the wall you can get six inches up to i think a foot of height inside your trailer so if you want to maybe mount your tires and wheels on the wall here you can do stuff like that so that's just some things that you can look for and like i said if you have any questions uh, I'd be more than happy to help as much as I can. Beckley's Camping Center is where I got this trailer from. So I give them a look out. Talk to Justin Shanholzer. He's the one that sold me this trailer and he's a lot more knowledgeable too, you know, with these types of things. So thank you guys again for watching this video. Hope it was helpful. See you in the next video.